part of Gita Gopinath's work has been focusing on the U.S. dollar's dominance in international trade and finance. She explains how after World War II, the U.S. dollar became the king of currencies, when European countries and their currencies were in collapse. If you look at what countries save in, overwhelmingly, about 60% of foreign reserves uh, are the dollar. So the dollar has a very big share in a country's foreign currency saving. It also has to do with how they trade with the rest of the world. There is a whole lot of trade where the U.S. is not involved, where the contracts are written in dollar prices, the settlement is done in dollar terms. It has to do with how the firms and their households, what currencies do they save in, what currencies do they borrow in internationally. The dollar shows up in all of these different spaces, in finance, in banking, in trade, in reserves, and that's the sense in which it's the dominant currency. Together with her research colleagues, Gopinath developed the dominant currency paradigm, which analyzes the effect the U.S. dollar dominance has on exporting countries. Different from the Mundell Fleming paradigm, an influential and even Nobel-winning economic model, they showed how a currency depreciation is unlikely to boost exports. Let's take a three countries, let's say trade between India, the U.S., and Mexico. Under the Mandel Fleming paradigm, the assumption is that when Mexico sells to India, it sells everything in Mexican peso terms. When it sells to the U.S., it sells everything in Mexican peso terms. When the U.S. sells to India or to Mexico, it sells everything in dollar terms. When India sells to Mexico or to the U.S., it sells everything in rupee terms. Now, if you just did a simple test and you looked around in the world, that's not the case. Almost everything India exposed to the rest of the world is priced in dollars. Almost everything Mexico sells to the rest of the world tends to be priced in dollars. And there's a very basic assumption in Mandel Fleming that is, doesn't survive uh, the test in the, in the data. It was assumed that if now I am India and I price everything in rupee terms, then suppose that my currency depreciates, it's going to lead to an increase in exports out of India, but you don't really see a big export boost that comes immediately after your currency weakens uh, when you are in this world of uh, dominant currency pricing. Gopinath explains that the dollar has a very entrenched system that won't be broken easily. While the euro had some uptake as a global currency prior to the global financial crisis, it's gotten worse in recent years. China's renminbi has also a long way to go. Still, Gopinath says that international trade would benefit from a more balanced system. The euro is a credible option. They have made progress in recent years in improving the euro area architecture. If much more is done on that front, you could see the euro becoming even more important. In the case of China, they would have to move to a system of you know, far more open capital markets, stronger financial institutional architecture. Those are the kinds of big changes that can have an impact. Recently, Gopinath looked at private and central bank-backed digital currencies and their chances of ending the U.S. dollar dominance. Though an intriguing possibility, Gopinath says it's not very likely in the short term. We did not suddenly start using some other currency because of a different technology. The currency that you use has a lot to do with trust, with stability, uh, with whether it preserves its value. In the Lehman crisis, it was a crisis that originated in the US. The dollar strengthened right after. So you can see how the dollar can be very attractive as a currency to, to save in because it gains in value during uh, difficult times. <laughs>